amidst the record high inflation, exhausting foreign reserves and devastating floods, Pakistan has appealed for peace with its regional partners. That includes its arch rival and neighbor, India. Pakistan's chief of army staff, General Kamar Javed Bajwa, stressed on the need for peace and developing a mechanism for resolving bilateral issues. While addressing passing out ceremony at Pakistan Military Academy in the northwestern province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Bajwa has warned against the devastating price of status quo. We must strive hard to keep the flames of war away from the region. We must give peace a chance by developing a mechanism to resolve all our battle, bilateral issues peacefully. Moreover, as opposed to fighting each other, we should correctly fight hunger, poverty, illiteracy, popular population explosion, climate change and disease. The world has changed, so should we, as the price of status quo will be devastating for all of us. However, I must highlight here that our desire for peace must not be construed as our weakness. While emphasizing on some of the severe issues that Pakistan is facing currently, like hunger, poverty, illiteracy and climate change, the Pakistan army chief said maintaining peace would enable countries to fight against the prevailing problems. He further said that Islamabad is trying its best to break the political logjam in a bid to crack a peace deal with its regional partners. Pakistan's neighbor India maintains that Islamabad needs to up its efforts in fighting terrorism. New Delhi believes that Pakistan is turning into a safe haven for various terror organizations like Lashkari Taiba and Jayashi Muhammad. Time and again, Indian authorities have made it clear that terror and talks cannot go hand in hand with Pakistan. Now, for more on this, we are being joined live by Lieutenant General Syed Adha Hassan, former GOC 15 Corps. Thank you for being with us. Now, going by the Pakistan history, Army Chief weighs in invariably when on any engagement with India, despite uh, the fact that they would pretend to stay away from political discourse. At this stage, can Bajwa really weigh in? Uh, thank you, first of all, for inviting me for your very important program. Uh, as to your question, this is not the first time that General Kamar Bajwa has spoken about peace with India. Well, he's been at the helm of affairs now for six years and maybe a little, just a little less than that. I can remember any number of instances in which uh, General Bajwa has made a keynote addresses at different think tanks all over Pakistan and internationally, in which he has spoken in these terms. But the follow-up, I'm afraid, has hardly been evident. Uh, whenever you speak of these kind of things, obviously it must follow up with some executive directions, some kind of a demonstration that unfortunately has been missing. Uh, but to, uh, but one must say that yes, General Bajwa has been one of those army chiefs in Pakistan who has made uh, constant efforts to try and bring this discourse. But uh, your viewers must also be aware that Pakistan is a very, very complex country. It's a country which is uh, functions in layers, different narratives, and different narratives are uh, uh, sort of empowered at certain different times. Now, this is one of those times when Pakistan is really down and out. $30 billion have been virtually lost as a part of this uh, devastating floods which have hit it. This is a country which has got foreign exchange reserves of 12 to $14 billion. It's uh, looking for loans of 3 to $6 billion. And here it loses $30 billion to floods. Obviously, it is in an in a emergent kind of a situation. And uh, General Bajwa has really no other option but to talk peace with his neighbors, with his neighbors. And that makes a lot of sense. But then this has to have follow-ups. And I don't think India is being unfair by simply saying all we need is a commitment that talks and terror cannot continue together. Yes. On that, Lieutenant General, the key issue of terror and talks not going together 
in that light. How realistic are Bajwa's remarks? Does he mean business with India or is he possibly just throwing out a legacy soundbite on his way out? See, first of all, it is not yet completely certain that General Bajwa is on his way out. There is no certainty that uh, this final successor has been selected. He has just been to the United States for a longish visit. Uh, retiring army chiefs from Pakistan do not make farewell visits of more than seven days to the United States. Obviously, there is something which is in the air. Uh, some kind of a messaging which is being done. The world is very complex today with what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening in the Indo-Pacific, in between the Eurasian region. Obviously, Pakistan is a very important country. India is a very important country. South Asia is playing its own role. So therefore, at this stage, to conclude that this is, a, he's just making a, a, a lot of noise or he's doing it only for legacy issues, may not be a certainty. He may have been very well tasked out to do something or General Bajwa is looking for a political future himself. Uh, considering the way the polity in, in Pakistan is uh, structured, uh, I know General Bajwa does not have a political backing or a party to be with him, but uh, he is uh, one of those who could possibly start creating yet another narrative and uh, mm -hmm. to look for uh, being an influencer, a major influencer in uh, Pakistan in the near future. After all, he's got the experience of handling uh, uh, the strategic affairs of Pakistan for the last six years. So mm -hmm. I think we need to give it a little more time to really decide whether this is just legacy statements being made or there is something more realistic about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and what about the fledgling politicians who keep charging their stances for talks and business with India? Well, we expected that the new government which replaced uh, Imran Khan's government would be a more friendly government, more conducive to cooperation, looking at economics, uh, looking at the fact that the best options for Pakistan is really India. But uh, unfortunately, that's not turned out to be so. And you find uh, that uh, this government too has gone back to the old narratives. They understand that they are under challenge from Imran Khan for not being sufficiently anti-Indian and that uh, they have to therefore create those sound bites for the public to look and be viewed as being anti-Indian. So uh, you will find that, as I said at the beginning, Pakistan functions with different narratives uh, different layers, these layers will keep getting uh, activated from time to time. And as we come closer to the elections next year, you will probably find much more anti-Indianism coming in. Uh, cooperation with India, to my mind, till the next elections seems to be a far cry. Right. All right, Lieutenant General, thank you very much for your valued opinions there, bringing us all the latest. Thank you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.